Hello there, Flip here, and today, first it <laughs> it's 5.30 in the morning, so I'm so sorry if I sound fucking dead, but we are going to be delving into what I think has to be the most annoying and actually fucking clown take, and that is that Electro is still bad, and I'm going to be debunking that and a bit more about the other elements, but before we do that, as always, standard duty practices. If at any point during the video you are entertained, make sure to drop a like and even consider subscribing so we can clown on more misinformation in the Genshin community. And I also plan on coming out of my comfort zone a bit and making Elden Ring videos as I'm cripplingly addic- Crippin- Crippingly addicted to that game. And there is quite a bit about the game that I'd love to talk about. My first impressions video on it will be uploaded, hopefully if I don't fucking die, tomorrow. If you guys could go check that out, I'd very much appreciate it. And I also plan on expanding into shorts more, so if there are any clips of Twitch streamers saying outrageous shit, feel free to send a link to them in my comments. The first of that should be up by the time this video comes out. And now, let's move onwards. First, Electro, I need to apologize for the way you have been utterly disrespected and violated by a mass majority of the community and to be frank I'm actually still surprised people see Electro as bad when one of the most wanked off teams Raiden National is good because Raiden is Electro and not any other element. This team would be way worse by a decent margin if Raiden was any other element or if we removed the Electro component. I'll touch on that a bit later when we look at the reactions. But even looking at this as a whole, what is a good element? In Genshin, every element except this green fucker is comprised of the characters, the reactions, and the resonance. Pyro is considered to be strong because it has three, if you're pushing it, really good characters, a decent resonance, and then the reactions are all damage related with two multiplicative reactions. So Pyro can clearly be seen as a strong element. It checks all three of the boxes. However, people will consider elements like Hydro or Onimo to be better elements, even though they only check two of the boxes because of the element's utility. In fact, every other element checks two out of three for what comprises an element, and then there's Electro. Good characters, good reactions, and a good resonance. How do people think it's bad? At first, I was trying to think, oh, it's because it doesn't have multiple multiplicative reactions so people don't see the big funny number even even though electro units innately have higher scaling because they can't do multiplicatives but then i realized onimo and geo are also considered really good despite the fact that they don't have multiplicatives then i realized electro doesn't make you do a big funny number onimo has the vv set which is a free damage increase and then geo the actual worst element in the game has geo resonance which again is a damage increase Electro doesn't really have anything in it that innately boosts other characters damage so people call it bad and then drag down its other merits to try and justify it being bad because the amount of people I've heard say Electro is bad because of its resonance boggles me when Hydro resonance exists. You guys not gonna ask for a buff for that? Actually this is a good segue, let's talk about Electro resonance and why it's better than what people give it credit for. So I'm pretty much gonna assume you all know how Electro Resonance works, you get an Electro Particle every 5 seconds after proking an Electro Reaction. And for this I do agree that maybe it would be better if it gave a Neutral Particle, but an Electro one is still good from those that can benefit from it. Over a rotation which is around 20 seconds, usually a bit longer than that, it's essentially a free 5-6 to six Electro Particles, which lowers the R requirements by a decent bit for characters like Yai, Beidou and Sera, who have ridiculously fucking high burst costs. I can see why many people jump the gun and say it's bad, as first the particles are smaller than whatever Hu Tao has on her chest, and with all the numbers flying around you probably never see a proc. On top of this, no one really pays attention to their energy gauge mid-combat. It's always when you need to burst and you see that it's full, or you see that the energy bar isn't full, since it doesn't really have a strong visual effect like Pyro and Geo Resonance, which is just a bigger number, you don't really see the effects of it, but it is really good for the characters that can benefit from it. And if I'm being honest, why the fuck do we even care about Resonance to begin with? Onimo Resonance is just for Exploration Andes, and Zhao, Hydra Resonance is Cryo Resonance is really good, Geo Resonance is pretty good, and Pyro Res is overrated as fuck. Anytime you run 2 Pyro, Bennett is 90% guaranteed to be on that team with 4 Noblesse. It still is more damage and more damage is appreciated, but with how much attack you get on 2 Pyro teams already, it is again a small bonus. It doesn't make or break how good an element is. 
Electro Resonance is good as it is, there is no real reason for it to be buffed. And now speaking of what actually can make or break an element, let's move on to the characters. But why I say this is because the same could be applied for a character like Kaching or Razor, Beto. A lot of these characters would be monumentally more powerful had they been given other elemental types. Another reason why Electro gets the redo of healer treatment by the community is because of Kaching. For a majority of the game cycle, Kaching was the staple Electro DPS, at least in Casual's eyes. The TCN meta community gave that title to Beta because her damage is fucking nuts, but as you know, if a character isn't on field, surely they don't do most of the damage on a team. So for a good portion of the game, people looked at Kaching whenever Electro was mentioned. But the thing with Kaching is that she doesn't show off what Electro does well as an element because she doesn't apply a lot of it and her range of Electro application is small, but for some reason, people are using Kaching as the metric to judge Electro's viability as a whole. Which just isn't fair. It's like using fucking Sayu to try and represent Animo's strength. It just isn't fair. <laughs> <laughs> and another brain dead point I've heard is that no, the element isn't good, it's just the characters that are good. Congratulations, you've just described Geo. Actually, just as a quick tangent, it actually boggles me beyond belief. Like, I'm actually stunned, frozen, petrified at the amount of mental gymnastics you have to do to justify Electro being bad, but consider Geo to be good as an element. Anyways, back to the characters. I really hate the character's good elements bad point because characters in this game are balanced around what element they are. If a character would have been better as a different element, they would have been that element. An element ties so much into a character's identity it's ridiculous. If you look at Pyro, it isn't just some coincidence that the strongest hits in their kit have no ICD. Even fucking Yoimiya, assuming you don't get interrupted, her ICD lines up so that you can vaporize the strongest part of her normal attacks. That isn't a coincidence. Get any Electro character and there would be a fuck ton of flaws in trying to shift their element. All Electro characters are best as Electro and their kits cater to that. Okay, now with that out of the way, let's tackle the behemoth itself, Electro reactions. Regarding the reactions, the only take I somewhat agree with is to change Superconduct to be a defense shred instead of a physical shred. That would make it worth to some extent to run Cryo and Electro together, however I don't see it changing the Electro Cryo comps that much, unless you're Kokomi clan who runs Inazuma National. But regardless, Superconduct really really meh. However, Overload, and especially Electro Charged, are amazing and fine as they are. Starting with Overload, it's just AoE damage that procs alongside your normal rotation loop that has utility in breaking shields, free staggering which is really helpful against teleporting fucks, especially Mirror Maiden and Sisson Mages. Good utility and decent damage, already doing better than Crystallize. I can see why people say it's annoying as it knocks back enemies, but at the same time, just don't use overload comps against enemies with low poise that can get knocked back far. Now let's finally talk about Electro Charge or EC, which what it allows you to do is absolutely fucking ridiculous. This is the best Electro reaction with how it works and easily a top 3 reaction being better than the multiplicatives. First, what Electro Charge allows you to do, which is its unique property, is that it allows you to simultaneously have an Electro and Hydro Aura on an enemy. This means if you add a Pyro hit on top of this, you now overload and vaporize the same hit, which is one of the reasons why Raiden National is so fucking strong in single target. The sheer amount of transformatives you proc alongside big multiplicative hits makes up for the lack of an Animo character. Speaking of Animo, with Swirls, you swirl both the Hydro and Electro Aura on an enemy, which first causes a double swirl of the element and then procs EC, and in multi-target situations causes two instances of an Electro Swirl and one instance of a Hydro Swirl on the enemies. It's kind of complicated, but TLDR, lots of transformatives ramp up and stack for high damage, and then you have Sukokomon which combines all of these elements, making undoubtedly one of the strongest comps in the game. And this is purely because of the way Electro Charged works. No other reaction in the game allows for stuff like this to happen to this extent. I don't really even get why people compare transformative and multiplicative reactions in the first place when they scale and work fundamentally different. If you look at EC you see chaining damage, but then you combine it with other things like Pyro or Onomo and you see how strong this reaction really is and how many teams can be opened up due to this. So on the elements, Overload is niche, but good, Superconduct is meh, and Electro Charge is OP as fuck. Again, it's doing better than piss-coloured physical damage.
All in all, I really do wish people would stop shitting on Electro, as when you know when and how it works, you can create some amazing fun low investment teams with it, and I genuinely think anyone would enjoy experimenting with them. After the transformative changes, there is currently no element that needs buff or serious tweaking, they are all fine as they are, except Geo. Fuck Geo. And on that note, thank you guys so much for watching, if you enjoyed the video make sure to like, subscribe and comment what your thoughts are on Electro as I would love to hear them and I respond to almost every single comment. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Peace.